Thank you, Drew. You know, I just knew, I just knew that you told me you played like cornerback. I mean, and then I saw you and I thought there's no way you could play cornerback. But, hey, we are so excited that you're here today. This Wednesday, December 23rd, the community is doing something that I think is really special. And we want all of you to be a part of that this Wednesday at 6 p.m., the community is meeting at the 4-H grounds, and they're going to do a Christmas parade. And here's what's going to happen. They want your families, so grandparents, get your grandkids, parents, get your children. They want you to meet at the 4-H ground at 6 o'clock. They're going to do family photos. They're going to give each car cookies and milk. Each car, each family gets an ornament. Each family gets uh, a scavenger hunt. Each family gets some reindeer food. And shortly after everyone gets all their goodies distributed to them, they're going to take off. And there's going to be a parade through town. And they're going to go through and they're going to look at several of the lights that people have signed up to be in a Christmas light contest. We're looking for, like, the best Christmas vacation house that we can find If you've seen uh, Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation, they're looking for the most lit up house, the best house. And on the way, they're actually going to stop and deliver gifts. The uh, police department, the fire department, they're all going to be there. They're going to be stopping and delivering gifts to children throughout our community. And here's the the coolest thing. There's going to be Christmas music being played on your radio the whole time. And then we're going to meet uptown at the new park And our church is putting on a live nativity, and we're going to end with Jesus by gathering around the live nativity, by singing uh, just two or three praise songs, Christmas songs, as a community together. So I think it'd be really special if all of you, all of you could be part of this. Uh, This is the first time our community has ever done anything like this, so I'm super excited, and I want you guys to be part of that um, so much. If you're in the nativity, we want to try to get you costumes this afternoon after church. If you can't get them, or if you're watching online and you're not here today, reach out to me, and I'll make sure that you get your costumes We're going to meet at the courthouse at 645. That way we can hang out inside where it's warm. And then as the parade comes closer to town, we'll go over and we'll be ready. We're going to have live animals. It's just going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity. Right, buddy? So with that being said, I want to to get right back into uh, our Christmas series that we've been doing We launched this series a few weeks ago, and it's called Ugly Christmas Sweater. And one of the things we admitted early on is this year, this year has been a little ugly. And we've learned that that as this year has been a little ugly, many of us have been a little ugly. And we we talked about how ugliness starts, like in our mind, it starts with our, our thoughts, and, and then last week, we, we took that from our thoughts, and, and then it starts coming out of our mouths, and so our, our words start to turn a little ugly. And, and from there, we're going to, to go to today where we're talking about ugly motives. So now it's not just words, but it's motives. Our goal throughout this series has simply been this, to, to turn one another from the ugliness to the beauty that that can only be found in Jesus. And as we celebrate Christmas, one of the reasons that we celebrate is is the joy that that Jesus brings. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to share today uh, the third part of this series called Ugly Motives. But before I do, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun. I want to ask a question. What is your favorite Christmas movie of all times. Anyone? Raise your hand and then I'll call you out so we can hear it. Yes. Die Hard? I knew someone was going to say that. Drew? Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation. Yes, Deb. Deb. I mean, Kathy. Why do I always call you Deb? Kathy. You should. What is it? 
Okay, very good. Yes? Grinch. Rudolph. Rudolph. Wonderful Life. Doug. 34th Street, Brooklyn. 34th Street, Brooklyn. Polar Express. Well, hey, I want to look at what America says, and I think some of these are going to sound familiar. This is the top ten Christmas movies of all times, as reported by the USA Today. Are you ready? Number ten. Happiest season. Never seen it. Never heard of it. Probably because it's brand new this year. Go watch it. Number nine. One of my favorites. Elf. Number eight. A Christmas Story. Number seven. Charlie Brown Christmas. Number six. Claws. Number five. I don't know what happened there. Number five is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Number four is Nightmare Before Christmas. That's, that shouldn't even be a Christmas movie. Number three. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Number two, Miracle on 34th Street. And the number one Christmas movie of all times, no, it's not National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Didn't even make the top ten. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. Would you bow your heads? I want to open in a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the heart of the message. Lord, this Christmas... As we reflect on what the holidays truly are, I pray that above all else, we elevate the name of Jesus. This Christmas, I pray that we make Jesus our focal point. And Lord, I pray that as we turn our eyes back to him, that the ugliness that we've experienced this year fades away and we begin to see beauty once more beauty in our thoughts beauty in our words and beauty in our actions I thank you that you're on the throne and that you're still in control I thank you that we get to celebrate a risen savior and may you receive all glory in Jesus name amen Every single person in this room is motivated by something. Some of you, it's food. Some of you, it's popularity. Some of you, it's your spouse. But let me tell you, every single person in this room is, is motivated by something. We're all motivated to, to act by specific things in life. Some of you, it could be success. Some of you, it could be money. But we have a, a motivation. And so the question that I want to get you started thinking about right off the, the, the bat today is simply this. What is your motivation? What is your motivation? And as we get into scripture today, what we might find is many of us, especially this year, have struggled with some ugly motives. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. If you're following along on you version, the scripture should already be in there. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others. For you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. 
Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but, but Thursday night we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and one of the things that, that we brought up in Thursday night's teaching is, is Scripture talks an awful lot about rewards, right? There's some rewards that those who are faithful, those who are doing what God has asked us to do, there are some rewards that we're going to be able to experience. And, and here it is, once again, we're seeing that word reward brought up. Watch out, don't do your good deeds publicly to, to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. And when I, when I talk about rewards, we, we, we mentioned this Thursday, I want to mention it again. I'm not talking about salvation. Salvation is not a reward. Salvation is a gift, right? You can't take that away. That is a gift that's given by the Father. We're talking about rewards, He says, when you give to someone in need, don't do it as hypocrites do. Blowing trumpets in the synagogues, in the streets, to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward that they will ever get. And you want to know what that reward is? They were seen by men. That's all they're going to get. That's it. Verse 5. It says, when you pray, don't be like the the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. You want to know what the reward is? They were seen by others. Verse 16, and when you fast, If you're new here today, our our church challenges the congregation to start off the new year by fasting. And fasting isn't something that we just do in January. Fasting is something that we should be doing January, February, March. It's something that we should be doing. It should be something that we do continually in our lives. And, And If you're not really sure what fasting is, uh, we're going to talk about that here in a few weeks and give you an opportunity, maybe for your first time, to participate in a fast. Verse 16, and when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable so that people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. You want to know what their reward is? They'll be seen by men. Today, I want you to hear this. I believe that we have a loving father who who is crazy about us. And if you're a dad, this might resonate within you. Sometimes you just want to reward your children. Sometimes you just want to give them some things. And we have some rewards to look forward to. But we have to go back to our motives. In other words, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Christmas is a time of year where where most of us, we do some pretty special things. It's it's the time of year where where we're the most generous, where we we give. It's the time of year where we we ring the bell, we sign up, and we give an hour of our time, and we ring the bell, or, or we drop money in, in that kettle. It's the time of year where, where we give gifts, and we wrap gifts for, for children in the community, and for family and loved ones. It's the time of year where, where we give to our, our favorite charity. But the question I want to ask you this morning is simply this, why? Why are we doing this in other words what is my motivation in in giving in matthew jesus is speaking to to people who who got it wrong he's speaking to the pharisees and the sadducees and they got it wrong their motives were wrong it wasn't that that jesus didn't want them to to uh, pray. Of course he wanted them to pray. It wasn't that he didn't want them to fast. Of course he wanted them. And it wasn't that he didn't want them to give. Of course 
He wants us to give. It was the motive behind the action that he was calling out. Their passion to look spiritual was more important than actually being spiritual. They would rather look the part than than be the part. And that was their, their motive. Jesus was interested in the motive Behind the action. In fact, you could say this. God is is more concerned about why we are doing something than what we are doing. God is is more interested, more concerned about the why than than the what. And and we see this throughout Scripture. And I want to point out just a couple, but there are many others that you'll see throughout Scripture. The first one is found in Isaiah 20. 9 verse 13 it says and so the Lord says these people they they say they are mine they honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me and their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules now it's important that you understand this this morning God is not against us worshiping him he wants us to worship him but we have to have the right motives why are we worshiping him? Why are we singing those songs? Why am I lifting my hands? Why am I shouting hallelujah? Is it so everyone else sees me and sees how spiritual I am? Or is it because it's who he is? See, we know God is not against worship. But These people had the wrong motives. They weren't worshiping out of genuine love that they had for the Father. They were actually worshiping based on what what man said. And that was a problem. Another example that we can bring up is found in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. It says, each of you must decide in your own heart what it is You're going to give, and and it goes on to say, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for for God loves someone who gives cheerfully. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but all throughout Scripture, God's Word teaches that we're supposed to to give, that we're supposed to, to tithe, that we're supposed to Go beyond, above and beyond that. But, but what's even more importantly than that action is that we're doing it cheerfully. That we're not doing it, oh man, i got to get that in there before someone calls. Or, oh, I can't believe how much I have to give. Do you know what I could do with this? If I just hung on to this this week, it would make Christmas so much better. If I just, you know, I just have to. He wants us to give cheerfully, not because we have to, but because we we want to. Not because we're reluctant or feel pressure, but because we recognize that that it is his. What I'm trying to say, and I want you to hear this this morning, is sometimes God is more concerned about the why than the what. Sometimes he's more concerned about the why than the what. So sometimes I think we just have to have a spiritual check and ask ourselves, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I doing this? Even at Christmas, we need to ask ourselves those questions like, why am I giving this person this gift? Is it because I want them to know how much I love them? Is it because I want to get a gift in return, and the more gifts that I give out, the more gifts I get back? Is it because I want to outdo someone else that maybe gifted them? Is it because I want to fit in? Is it because I don't want someone to not like me? Why are we giving the gifts that we get? Is it because I want someone to appreciate me or not think badly of me? Sometimes God is more concerned about the why than the what. And it's not just Christmas, right? Like, look at everything that you're doing in life right now. 
you're serving on this board, or you're volunteering here, or you're giving there, or you're in this ministry. And the question I think we have to ask ourselves is, is why? And if there's not real purpose there, and if you're not doing it because of the joy of the Lord just bubbling inside of you, then you need to pause and take a break. Because sometimes God's more concerned about the why than the what. He isn't just concerned that we're doing good things. He's concerned about our intentions or our motives. What motivates us. And if we're not doing it for the right reason, trust me when I tell you this, your motives will turn ugly. It just seeps in and... and, and, and people around you will pick up on that ugliness. And, and when we have ugly motives, it ruins our ability to, to witness, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. It, it ruins our ability to grow. And one of the things that God wants us to do is, is grow and mature. The very way that, that Jesus came to us at Christmas gives us inspiration for for living life by the right motives and we we have a a manger here by the tree this morning i want you to think about that as as we read um, part of the christmas story today in luke chapter 2 verse 1 through 7 In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now I want to just stop right there. If anyone ever deserved to be praised for their actions it was god the father if anyone ever deserves to be praised it's it's jesus coming to rescue us but but notice how he he comes he's not coming and being born and and being made known to man in a palace he's not coming and being born and being made known in, in a temple he's not even showing up in the middle of the great city but in the middle of nowhere, really, in a feeding trough used to feed smelly animals. His motivation wasn't recognition or or fame. His motivation was, was simply this. I love these people, and they need redemption his motivation was you and i he came so that we could be forgiven so that we could be made right with the father and that should be worth getting excited about which is what makes christmas so special in fact you could say this jesus is our motivation he should be our motivation let's be honest the reason we wear ugly sweaters if we're being truthful it's because we want to draw attention to ourselves right that's what we're really doing when jesus becomes our motivation our desire changes from drawing attention to ourselves to to drawing attention to him 
In other words, when we serve others, it's not so that others can see how good of a person we are. When we serve others, it's because he first served. And we want people to see Christ in us. Not us, but Christ in us. When we love others, it's not because we want people to see how loving we are. It's because we want people to see how loving he is in us. When we become uh, true uh, followers of Christ, our motives actually begin to change. It's no longer about us, but it's about him. And that's the beauty of Christmas. For me, that's truly the beauty of Christmas. It's the one time of the year that that we should be able to take the focus off of us and, and put it on him. How many of you have ever heard of George Gipp? One person. That's it? Two. Two people. Well, let me tell you a little bit about George Gipp. I need to kind of build myself up after a terrible defeat yesterday. George Gipp was a Notre Dame football star who could do it all. He could run, he could pass, he could punt. If I was on the football field, he would remind me a lot of myself. (laughs) Not just an offensive lineman, sorry, Drew. (laughs) This guy could do it all. He had unparalleled skill. And during the 1920 season, George Gipp became Really, a football star. He was Notre Dame's first Walter Camp All-American. But as quickly as it came, it left. Because on December 14, 1920, young George Gipp died of pneumonia. Several years later, November 10, 1928, Notre Dame is having a huge game against Army, and at halftime, they're tied, and they're struggling for victory. And the coach, who in himself was a a legend, Coach Rock, told of being beside the Gipps hospital bed a few years back, and he recalled how, how, how Gibb told Coach this, Sometimes, Rock, when a team is against it, when things are going wrong and the brakes are beating the boys, tell them to go out there with all they've got and just win one for the Gipper. Notre Dame was motivated to win that game, and guess what? They did. They won one for the Gip. Now, I was hoping they would have that conversation yesterday in the locker room. But like many of you, maybe they've forgotten who he is. What is our motivation? What is our motivation? Why are we doing what we're doing? Sometimes, sometimes God's more concerned about the why than the what. As followers of Jesus, our motive for loving others, our motive for serving others should always be about who he is. Should always be about what he's done. His life, his death, his resurrection, his sacrifice motivates us to to sacrifice for others. So I want to invite our worship team to come back up. And as they're coming back up, as you came in today, you should have received a, a small piece of paper. And every week through this series, we've been challenging you guys to, to do some things, and, and this week's no different. We're going to challenge you to do some things. This week, I'm challenging our church. I'm challenging all of you to do something special. I'm challenging you to to do one act of kindness to someone. 
On your paper, you can write down who that person is. Uh, you can wait until you actually do it and then write down that, that person's name. Challenging you to, to do an act of kindness, and I'm challenging you to, to do it anonymously. I'm challenging you to, to bless someone, to serve someone, to, to show up some way and not let them know that it was you. Fact, we want them to, to know that it's actually Jesus. He's the reason that they're being blessed. And if God's been especially good to you this year and you're able, why not? choose two people or three people or four people and may Jesus be our, our motivation for, for doing this act of kindness this Christmas not recognition I'm not asking you, in fact I don't want you to tell anyone if you tell someone what you did then you failed this, this challenge I don't want you to tell your spouse or your siblings or your best friend this is between you and, and God and no one else. This is about him being recognized this Christmas. Would you bow your heads? I want to pray for you. Lord, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for Jesus. I'm so thankful for the love that you've shown each and every one of us. And today, may we be motivated out of that love for us to, to love others, to, to step up and, and show others Christ. No other recognition needed just to point people back to Jesus so that not only will our year be a little brighter, but each of theirs will too. We thank you. In Jesus' name.